The groom's brother is a high school dropout. He's a disgrace to our family. Cameron Jackson made fun of me on the grandest of occasions, the wedding ceremony. Even though he was the father of Cora, who would become the wife of my precious brother Ian. His insulting comment made me want to run away from the scene. It was an important moment, the last speech at the wedding reception. But Cameron, who was extremely drunk, did a terrible thing. Hearing the words high school drop out, I heard giggles from the audience who were making fun of me. I was unable to move from my chair, but it was my younger brother Ian who saved me. Immediately after that, when Ian told Cameron who I was, he was astonished. Afterward, Cameron got down on his knees as if to worship me. Maybe he had a prejudice against the word, high school dropout. However, Cameron's excessive behavior had nearly ruined his bond with his daughter, whom he had reared with great care. But knowing Cameron's suffering, I decided to help him. My name is Nolan Jones. At the age of 48, I remained unmarried and content with my current career, which I considered my genuine calling. I have a younger brother named Ian who can do anything, both academically and athletically. However, we had no parents. When Ian was five years old, our family was on a trip abroad when we had an accident and our parents left for heaven. I was a high school student at the time, and in order to raise Ian well, I decided to give up high school and work. We were not rich, but I earned enough money to raise Ian until he graduated from high school. Ian's goal was to enter the Air Force. Ian was encouraged to join the Air Force because he considered the officers who rescued him from a jet crash as heroes. After graduating from military school, Ian realized his dream of becoming an Air Force officer and being sent to the scene of aircraft accidents and disaster relief. I was worried about his assignment to the scene of major accidents and disasters. One day, he unexpectedly brought along a stunning girlfriend. Cora Jackson, who was introduced to me as his girlfriend, was an active flight attendant. Cora, who was saved by Ian after a plane crash, developed a great attraction to him. Just as Ian was when he was a child. Ian must have looked like a hero to Cora. To be honest, I was astonished to learn that they were going out to marry as soon as Ian introduced me to her. But I congratulated them for being a beautiful couple and making a good match. Although Ian has been out in the field, such as in disaster relief. After graduating from the military school, he was recognized by his superiors and quickly rose through the ranks. He was in his mid-thirties but had already attained the rank of battalion commander. Cora, who was diligent and committed to her career, was now working as a chief flight attendant on international flights. I felt genuinely privileged to have both a brother and a sister-in-law to be proud of. When I learned that these two incredible people were finally getting married, I was overjoyed as if it were my own. A few days after hearing their wedding report, when I went out for dinner with a friend from work, I happened to bump into Ian and Cora who were having dinner at the same restaurant. Oh, are you here to eat too, Nolan? Yeah, I'm having dinner with my friends from work. You guys always look so happy. I really envy you. That day, they were having dinner with Cora's father, Cameron Jackson. I was about to go to my table, not wanting to intrude. But then, Cameron called out to me, are you Ian's brother? Hi, I'm Cameron, Cora's father. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for always taking care of Ian. Cameron exuded an upper-class aura while clothed in a high-end suit. He appeared to be a well-educated man, and his appearance, implying that he worked for a famous company, caused me to take a step back. By the way, which university did you graduate from? He used a low profile, but I felt he was asking me a strange question. I dropped out of high school. Oh, you're a high school dropout. I see. Cameron smirked at me when he realized I had dropped out of high school. Cameron had a peculiar way of speaking and an aggressive attitude. I assumed he was the type of guy I didn't want to deal with, so I bailed softly and walked away.
Cameron's attitude irritated me, but I reminded myself that I had limited opportunities to interact with him. Then Ian ran up to me. Nolan, I'm sorry. I'm sure Cameron is just in a bad mood today. Ian spoke apologetically, but I was worried that someone like that would be Ian's father-in-law. A few months later, the long-awaited wedding day of Ian and Cora arrived. I came early at the wedding location and worked on my laptop in the family waiting area while waiting for others to arrive. Then Cameron came in. When he saw me, he looked down at me, snickered, and sat down on a chair away from me. Since Cameron didn't talk to me, I had no reason to talk to him. While there was an awkward atmosphere in the room, an elderly couple who seemed to be relatives of Corey appeared a little later. They were talking to Cameron in a friendly manner, so I guessed they were Corey's grandparents. To avoid contact with Cameron as much as possible, I didn't pay attention and continued to work. After that, no one came into the waiting room, so I was the only relative of Ian. I guessed that Cora's relatives were only Cameron and her grandparents. When the time came, a staff member of the wedding hall came in with Ian and Cora. Cora, in her pure white wedding gown, was so beautiful that I couldn't help but admire her. Ian also looked great in his tuxedo. I tried not to say anything unnecessary during Ian's relative's introduction so I only gave a modest greeting. But Cameron looked at me as if he was making fun of me. Hi, I'm the father of the bride. I'm so delighted that our daughter, who has lived a first-class life, will marry into such a lovely husband. Well, Ian's brother seems to be a bottom feeder. I'm sure he's being looked after by his wonderful brother all this time. The air in the waiting room went quiet as Cameron spoke to people in the room. I looked at him, surprised at Cameron's comments, and he looked satisfied. Ian was holding Cora's shoulder, attempting to calm her down. Cameron, on the other hand, persisted in his arrogance and stared out the window. The atmosphere was tense, but the staff of the wedding hall hurriedly followed up, and we headed for the wedding hall. Without dragging the chilly atmosphere in the family waiting room, we proceeded with the wedding ceremony without incident. After the ceremony, we entered the reception hall, and every table was filled with friends of the bride and groom. I never imagined Ian would be able to have a wedding with so many people. I felt so much joy that all the hard work I had done in the past had been wiped away, and warm tears rolled down my cheeks. The family seating was set up on both sides of the table, far away from each other. I was relieved since I didn't have to speak with Cameron, who had been unpleasant to me from our first meeting. The reception was filled with many smiles from start to finish, and it was time for the last and final speech. Originally. The groom's father was supposed to address the bride and groom before the bride and groom. Since Ian and I didn't have parents, Cameron was supposed to give the speech. I had a bad feeling about this. And Cameron, who was completely drunk, skipped all the arrangements and suddenly started talking. Thank you very much for coming down to celebrate my naughty daughter's wedding. Cora was shocked to hear his first words, and she was frowning and had shifty eyes. Ian was also looking at Cameron in bewilderment. Cameron, on the other hand, appeared to believe that he had successfully captured everyone's attention and smiled cheerfully. Cora probably feared her father's dull words would ruin the finest day of her life. She was so upset that she attempted to take the microphone away from Cameron. Hey, Dad. It's okay. Leave it to me. I wasn't sure what we were meant to leave to him, but I knew he'd ruin the wedding in the end. And what's more, their whispered conversation can be heard throughout the hall through the microphone. However, Cameron, without caring about Cora's embarrassment, began to make an unnecessary speech. Everyone in my family is a college graduate. We're all doing well as members of society with thanks to our high educational background. I wasn't sure he knew what he was saying. Cameron's speech lacked substance, and I couldn't understand what he was trying to say. However, I had a negative feeling about Cameron's haughty remark regarding his family's academic background. I hoped I was wrong. Bad predictions are certain to come true. Ha ha ha. This is hilarious and funny. But actually, it's not very funny. It's an obvious fact that your education can make or break your life. So, nowadays, it's crazy, but the groom's brother dropped out of high school. He's a disgrace to our family. I was so astonished that I was speechless as if time had stopped. Immediately after that, a spotlight suddenly shone on me, as if Cameron had planted it. I wasn't sure if they were laughing bitterly because I was a high school dropout, 
but I heard giggles and taunting laughter from the guests. I couldn't bear to be around people who were looking at me with contempt, and all I could think about was how I could escape from there. However, Ian's gaze was confident, not contemptuous, as he seized my arm. Encouraged by Ian's strength, I regained my composure and raised my head. Ian proudly walked back to where the family was standing and took the microphone from Cameron. Cameron, could it be that you don't know my brother's occupation? Huh? What are you asking me that now? I'm sure a high school dropout has few job possibilities. I'm certain that your brother, who's a loser, doesn't have a job he can be proud of. Cameron, who was approaching Ian with dignity, gave me a glance and snickered. My brother is indeed a high school dropout. But now, he's teaching at a university. What? What are you talking about? How is that possible for a high school dropout? Cameron, who didn't believe Ian's words at all, finally made fun of Ian, partly because he was drunk. I don't doubt your respect for your beloved brother, but I think you should understand the reality of the situation. Your brother is only a high school dropout. Cameron, who had too much to drink and was completely drunk, now looked down on Ian, whom he had just praised. Cora, alongside him, appeared so humiliated that she was close to bursting into tears while blushing. As Cameron continued to make his point without caring, Ian could no longer hide his anger. Cameron, why do you enjoy embarrassing Cora? Do you understand what you're doing? Dash, you must be desperate to defend your high school dropout brother. If he is a loser, is it possible that you, his brother, are also a loser? Cameron, who was inebriated, most likely had no idea what he was talking about. Disgusted by Cameron's outburst, Ian sighed loudly and slowly began to reveal my true identity. Cameron, do you know someone by the name of Jacob King? Of course, I do. Everyone knows him because he's famous. Do you think I'm an idiot or what? Was it my daughter's husband who needed education? Well, Jacob King is my brother. Huh? What are you talking about? Cameron, who froze as he rolled his eyes, stared at me in the spotlight. My brother is a visiting professor who teaches history and archaeology at a university and has published several books. The pen name he uses is Jacob King. He uses it in his lectures since the university is so considerate. As someone who doesn't like to stand out, I wanted to keep my true identity a secret until the end. In fact, I work as a university professor. I have given many lectures in front of many students at Cora's university. Cora herself seemed to recognize me and asked me for my autograph at our first meeting. Certainly, no one would have guessed that I, a high school dropout who did not even attend a university, would be teaching at a university. When the attendees heard my pen name, they started to murmur about the presence of a celebrity. Some of the friends of the bride and groom in attendance that day might have attended one of my lectures. I felt a little nervous when I thought about it. It's true, Mr. King is said to have dropped out of high school. No way. Dad, that's enough. You're the one who's bringing shame to everyone in the family. Cameron was yelled at by an irate Cora, and as he sobered up completely, he looked aghast and stunned. It was really only by chance that I was now in a position to teach at a university. After dropping out of high school, I worked many part-time jobs with the sole purpose of not causing Ian any trouble. However, as Cameron said, there were no good jobs for high school dropouts. I can tell you how many times I almost collapsed from the days of hard physical labor for cheap wages. Still, I worked hard every day to make a living. It was then that I happened to come across a part-time job as an archaeological excavator. Excavating ruins takes a long time and occasionally requires overnight stays, but it pays well compared to other jobs. Fortunately, the site at the time was not far from my home. I was worried about leaving Ian home alone. But thanks to Ian, who was a junior high school student at the time and helped me with the housework, I was able to go for a few days. I decided to go, so I rode the first bus to the site practically every day. As I persevered and continued to do the detailed work every day without a break, I was suddenly approached by the person who was said to be the most important person at the site. You have good instincts. Would you like to study archaeology and history under me? This person was Professor Andrew Miller, who taught archaeology at a well-known university. Professor Miller was a well-known academic who taught archaeology at a prestigious university. 
He spent most of his time at ditch sites and was frequently featured on TV and in magazines. After that fateful encounter, I fell in love with archaeology, and I found myself going to the professor's laboratory at the university. One day, Professor Miller appointed me as the head researcher of a new site. Ian, a high school student at the time, had become such a skilled boy that he could take care of most of the home tasks. So I was able to go to the excavation site without hesitation. It was a turning point in my life, and Ian, who had matured beyond my expectations, pushed me forward. So it's not an exaggeration to say that Ian has helped me get where I am now. The months passed by in the blink of an eye, and I found myself working directly with Professor Miller as his right-hand man and teaching at the university. I was thrilled to be labeled Professor Miller's no one disciple, and I became even more immersed in archaeology, and I even published a book on the subject. When Ian entered the military school, I began to travel around the world with Professor Miller. When I was teaching history and foreign culture as a professor, I was later told that Cora was listening to my lectures as a student, and it seemed that Cameron was actually a bigger fan of mine than Cora, and he knew more about my background and the content of my lectures than Cora did. But of course, he couldn't sneak into the university, so he had not known my face directly until today. Cameron was calmed down by Ian and Cora, and when he learned who I was, he suddenly fell to his knees and started to worship me as if he were worshipping a god. Hey, please don't do that. I just happened to come across archaeology and was given the opportunity to speak in front of the students. It's that kind of humble attitude that attracts fans. Cameron seemed interested in listening to others, which I had seen since our first meeting when he made fun of me. In the end, when Cameron discovered who I was, he altered his attitude completely and degraded me to the point of being very weird. Ian and Cora's wedding ceremony was a bit of a rocky ride, but in the end, everything calmed down and we ended the day without incident and with smiles. There were times when the whole venue was in an uproar, but I was happy just to see their happy smiles. I was astonished to find myself surrounded by people asking for autographs at the end of the day, but I was relieved when the wedding ended without any problems. But perhaps, Cora was very upset about what happened at the wedding. According to Ian, Cora refused to contact Cameron, and it appeared that they were no longer father and daughter. Nolan, I'm sorry to bother you, but could you help us out a little bit, if it's for you too? Of course, I'd love to help you. Ian's plan, which I quickly agreed to, was to reconcile Cora and Cameron over a meal that included me. I invited Cameron to the dinner, but as expected, Cora did not look happy about it. However, she seemed to understand Ian's feelings and agreed in the end. Cameron showed up at the restaurant, and to my surprise, he was wearing a shabby, shabby suit instead of the expensive suit he used to wear. As you can see, I'm having a rough time. Cameron apologized and it seemed that something terrible had happened to him. The company where he had worked for many years after graduating from college was a prestigious company that everyone knew about. However, Cameron was a rank-and-file employee who was long regarded as a deadwood. He was set to retire and only had a few years left before being laid off. He received only a small amount of severance compensation, and while he did not agree with it, he did not fight it either. Cameron was unable to take a firm stance against the company and ultimately accepted it. His vain lifestyle left him with no savings and no way to make ends meet. He dropped to his knees in front of me right after telling me about his current situation. You are the only one I can ask you this. Please, please lend me some money. Cora was taken aback by her father's unexpected and unusual actions, and she flushed with humiliation and fury. Come on, stop it. You are truly a disgrace to our family. Things went out of control, and we had no choice but to reschedule the dinner meeting. I didn't expect Cameron, a college-educated supremacist, to do something like this, but perhaps the price for looking down on others had come due. Cameron's attitude, that he could no longer even put up a good front, astonished me as well. A few days later, I answered a call from an unknown number, and to my surprise, it was Cameron. He said he had asked Ian to give him my number. Cameron took a big breath on the other end of the phone and began telling me about what had happened in the past, slowly and apologetically. I never told my daughter the real reason why my wife disappeared. Actually, 
My wife left me, saying she was going to be with a young man who was a high school dropout. Huh? Really? Cameron, I've heard, was not particularly concerned with one's educational history in the past. However, he had built up a lot of resentment toward the young man who took his wife away from him. Maybe that's why he wanted to take it out on me, a high school dropout. However, even if he was unhappy about high school dropouts, his comment at his daughter's wedding was inappropriate. Cameron himself was sorry about that. Cameron's behavior was too radical, just as he had ceased attempting to make himself appear nice at the previous dinner meeting. Now that he had lost his job, he felt that he didn't deserve to meet his daughter. He tearfully told me that he had distanced himself from his daughter. Thank you for sharing your story. I understand your sincerity. My pardon must have relieved the strain in his chest. And he expressed gratitude by crying over the phone. By the way, I have something that in which you might be interested. I asked Cameron to be a custodian at the university. It was a project that the university had originally asked me to look for manpower. I thought that Cameron, who had reformed himself so much, would have no problem. So I decided to introduce him to the university. The following week, Cameron started working as a custodian at the university. Surprisingly, he had a strong work ethic and appeared to be well suited to precise tasks. I heard Ian and Cora's marriage was going well, and she and Cameron were progressively improving their connection. Cameron is a little too extreme in some respects. But thanks to his diligent work, the university is grateful to him. I thought I was satisfied with the happiness that had come my way, until I met someone new. I will shortly marry Autumn Walker, a friend of Cora's, who she introduced me to. Autumn is divorced and has a son, Noah, who is just four years old. My younger brother Ian got married before me. But in the end, we laughed because I ended up having a child before him. When Autumn is busy with her work, I take care of Noah. Rather than being bored at home, I believed Noah would benefit from getting outside, so I took him to the campus. Then, Cameron started to play with Noah. Once I started taking Noah to the university several times, Cameron started to spend time with Noah as if he were his grandson, and their time together has become his greatest pleasure. Ian and Cora are expecting a child soon. I am sure that Cameron's enjoyment will increase even more. I'm also delighted because I now have a family, and I feel like a new chapter in my life has begun.